One of the most shocking parts of the Second World War was what the Red Army and the Allies would find as they took Nazi-occupied territory. Throughout 1945, the enemies of the Third Reich would stumble across a number of concentration camps, which would display the sheer horror of the Nazi regime in the Holocaust. For example, the British would liberate Bergen-Belsen, and the scene was sheer depravity in hell, with thousands of dead bodies and corpses lying around every corner of the camp. What the liberators of the camp would find is the true cruelty of the Nazi race laws, with the attempt to exterminate all of the Jewish community within Europe. The biggest extermination and killing centre of the Holocaust was Auschwitz, which would transition into an extermination camp in 1942. It would be the Soviets who would liberate the camp, but they were greeted also by horrific scenes. Join us today as we look at the liberation of Auschwitz, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Auschwitz concentration camp itself was a network of 40 different concentration, labour and extermination camps found within Poland. After the Germans invaded Poland in 1939, Auschwitz itself was an army barracks, but was quickly transformed into a prisoner of war camp. However, the camp would develop a reputation for brutality and horror. Its true horror is linked with the Holocaust, in which over a million Jews were sent to their deaths within the barbed wire fences of the camp. It had been decided that the camp would play a large role in the final solution, with the extermination of the Jews. Many would die from disease, starvation, executions, beatings, exhaustion, or from being sent to the gas chambers following selections by the SS doctors. Those who weren't fit enough were sent to their deaths instantly within the gas chambers, with new prisoners being brought to the camp. Between 1940 and 1945, around 1.3 million people, with most of these being Jews, were deported to the camp by the Nazis, and around 1.1 million would be murdered. Around August 1944, as the tide in the Second World War was turning, there were around 135,000 prisoners inside Auschwitz. It had branched out into a number of subcamps, with Auschwitz II Birkenau being the main extermination part of the camp, with the gas chambers and crematoria. The first concentration camp to be liberated in July 1944 was Maginek, near to Lublin in Poland. The Soviets would rapidly advance from the east, forcing the Germans back, but as quickly as the Soviets were gaining territory, the Nazis were trying to hide evidence left behind of the mass murders. The Soviets would continue to push from the east, and the Nazis would transport their prisoners away from the front lines, back towards Nazi Germany or Nazi-occupied territory. For example, the number of prisoners inside Bergen-Belsen would swell massively, with the transports of prisoners away from the front lines. The prisoners were forced to complete death marches in the cold over a number of weeks, and were shot if they could not keep up. Many would die from the weather, or from the hunger or sheer exhaustion. Evidence of the mass murders was collected from the liberation of the first camps, however on the 27th of January 1945, the Soviets would encounter the biggest extermination complex in the Holocaust. The last selections for the gas chambers at Auschwitz took place on the 30th of October 1944, and it was ordered by Heinrich Himmler to blow up the gas chambers and crematoria at the camp. The camp began to be evacuated before the Soviets arrived, and Himmler ordered the evacuation of all camps in January 1945. However, the leader of the SS would tell the camp commanders, Adolf Hitler holds you personally responsible for making sure that not a single prisoner from the concentration camps falls alive into the hands of the enemies. The Nazis would also transport a huge number of goods gathered from the prisoners that the camp had processed, and hundreds of thousands of objects were sent back towards Germany. On the 17th of January, an evacuation of prisoners began, with 58,000 being evacuated under guard. Many would head out on foot, but others would then travel via open-top freight trains to other camps within Germany and Austria, away from the front lines. On the 20th of January, crematoria 2 and 3 were blown up, and Canada, the vast storage warehouse of goods, was blown up three days later. Crematoria 4 was also demolished, and a day before the Soviets would come across the camp, Crematoria 5 was blown up. On the 27th of January 1945, the Red Army soldiers of the 322nd Rifle Division would arrive near to the camp. There had been fierce fighting with German soldiers around the Monowitz part of Auschwitz, and also at Birkenau and Auschwitz I. 
231 Red Army soldiers would die fighting to liberate the camp around the local towns. The first part of the complex to be liberated was Auschwitz III Monowitz, the IG Farben slave labour element of the camp. A soldier from the 100th Infantry Division of the Red Army entered the camp at 9am and later the 60th Army of the 1st Ukrainian Front would arrive in Auschwitz I and Birkenau around 3pm. Upon the first liberators entering Auschwitz III, it was said that the Red Army soldiers threw strangely embarrassed glances at the sprawling bodies in the battered huts and at those few still alive. They did not greet us nor did they smile. They seemed oppressed, not only by compassion but by a confused restraint, which sealed their lips and bound their eyes to the funereal scene. It was that shame we knew so well, the shame that drowned us after the selections, and every time we had to watch to submit to some outrage. The shame that Germans did not know. The Soviets were taken aback by the horrific scenes that would greet them. The Liberators would find 7,000 prisoners alive in the three main complexes, around 500 or so inside the subcamps, but also 6,000 corpses sprawled over the complex. A Soviet Liberator who entered one of the barracks said, he could hear other soldiers telling the inmates, you are free comrades, but they did not respond, so he tried again in Russian, Polish, German, Ukrainian. Then he used some Yiddish. Some of the prisoners began to hide and deemed the Russian liberators to be a threat. One soldier would say, don't be afraid, I am a colonel within the Soviet army and a Jew, we have come to liberate you. With this the prisoners would then rush forward towards their liberators, falling onto their knees in despair and elation. Even the most battle-hardened Soviet soldiers, who had been used to death, were taken aback and shocked by the Nazis' actions within the camp and how badly they had treated the prisoners. One Red Army general would state, I who saw people dying every day was shocked by the Nazis' indescribable hatred towards the inmates who had been turned into living skeletons. I read about the Nazis' treatment of Jews in various leaflets, but there was nothing about the Nazis' treatment of women, children and old men. It was in Auschwitz that I found out about the fate of the Jews. It wouldn't just be prisoners that the Soviets would find inside the camp. They would stumble across huge stores of items which were confiscated by the SS and the guards from the prisoners when they arrived. They would find millions of items, including around 800,000 women's clothing items, around 400,000 men's suits, 44,000 pairs of shoes, thousands of pairs of glasses and so on. They would even disturbingly find 7,000 kilograms of human hair, which was estimated to have come from around 140,000 prisoners. Some of this was later tested and found to contain the remnants of the poison used to kill inside the gas chambers, Cyclone B. As soon as the Soviets arrived within the camp, they would attempt to help the prisoners inside. The Polish Red Cross and Soviet Military Medical Service would set up field hospitals and care for 4,500 prisoners suffering from starvation and diseases. Local volunteers would initially help until the Red Cross would arrive in February. A large cleanup operation occurred too and it was found inside of the barracks that there was a huge layer of excrement on the floor, such was how weak some prisoners were, being even unable to go to the toilet. All of the medical patients inside Auschwitz were then moved to brick buildings around Auschwitz I for a better standard of care and a number of these blocks became hospitals. Some medical personnel would even work 18 hour shifts to care for the sick. There was also attempts at the time to document the behaviour what occurred inside Auschwitz and prisoners were interviewed and spoke about the crimes which they would have witnessed. The Soviets would be told of the horrific slaughter of people who were beaten to death by guards such as Irma Greys, or they were told of the selections SS doctors such as Josef Mengele would make, with thousands being sent to their deaths instantly inside of the gas chambers. They would find out about the sadistic medical experiments and how prisoners were routinely shot if they did not work hard enough. Many of the prisoners who were freed from Auschwitz would then provide evidence and testimonies for the war crimes trials established after the Second World War came to a conclusion. The liberation of Auschwitz initially wasn't publicised as much in the press, with the Russians choosing to focus on their advance towards Germany rather than the conditions within the camp. It would be reported in Pravda, the official broadsheet newspaper of the Soviet Union, however the report would not mention Jews. 
It wasn't until the Allies in the West would arrive at camps such as Bergen-Belsen or Dachau that the liberation of the camps received huge amounts of media attention and coverage. The sights that greeted the liberators of the concentration camps would be something that would haunt the minds of these soldiers until the days they died. The immense cruelty demonstrated by the Nazis under the guise of ethnic cleansing and mass extermination would be one of the sickest legacies of the Second World War. The huge amount of prisoners massacred in Auschwitz would be incomprehensible, with over a million being murdered for no crime whatsoever but their religion or heritage. Today Auschwitz remains a solemn and constant reminder of these crimes and of the hatred and brutality that human beings can inflict on one another. Initially the fear that those prisoners had inside the camp when the Soviets breached the gates of Auschwitz was changed when they realised they were there to liberate them. However the horror that these prisoners had seen by one of the most evil regimes the world has ever seen would be something they would also never forget. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel please make sure to subscribe and once again thank you so much for watching.